Thank you. My name is Carolyn Goodridge. I am the founder and the executive director of Art Impact International. We are a nonprofit 501c3 organization founded in 2015. So we're going strong. And thanks to you and all your beautiful work, I get to put it, help put it all together, right? And we have so many different countries that are participating. That makes me even more happy. Um, and, and as you know, we have other things coming up. So um, if you didn't know that yet, we do. So I think January the 15th is the deadline for the next open, for the next call, which is the child factor. One of the UN, uh, how do they put it? Um, global challenge. Yeah, it's what's happening to the children around the globe. So, um, so you can check that out on our website. So let's get started with our gallery talk. And we have a few artists who are actually in the show here tonight. So what I want to do is, um, you know, I don't want to mute everybody because I want you to be able to sort of interrupt and ask questions when we are on their artwork. Okay, so um, we're going to start with the largest bunch, which is the animals. Okay, and we have over, I believe, over 20, at least 25 artists who participated in just focusing on the animals. So I know they're all not on here, so, we, so it won't be too unwieldy, but we'll give everybody who's here a chance to speak about their work and why, why they did that piece and how it connects to the, the whole scheme of our endangered can art save them. Okay, so how about that? We ready to open up the galleries? <laughs> yes. All right, all right. Thank yes, you. I, I, I love participation because even, <laughs> even though I love to communicate, I, I feed off of your energy too. So I really love hearing your voices and your thoughts and your questions. So don't hesitate if you have a question, even if you can't interrupt in that moment, write it down so you don't forget it. Okay, so, all right. So let me go and I don't wanna uh, minimize this window cause then I'll lose you. Okay, so let me open. I have to click what's called share screen, right? Okay, here it is, share screen. This is the screen I'm gonna share. Okay, so what do you guys see? I just need to ask you that to make sure that you're, you're seeing the right thing. Are, are you seeing? The gallery, gallery one. of artists. Oh, one. Okay. One Great, great. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that bigger and Okay. Okay. What I what I want to try to do is whoever's going to be speaking, I I want to actually see their face so that when it's recorded, whoever's watching can see who it is that's speaking. So that's what I'm trying to do. All right, so let me show you at the very top, which is, that's abstract, that's the cultures. Here we are, this is, these are the animals, the endangered animals. So that's where we're gonna get started. If you wondered why there are asterisks next to some names, that's those artists who were in gallery too. That's all that means, okay? I didn't want to have two separate blocks. So we have one in gallery two. Okay, so these are the artists. And any of you who want to go in and look at their work, I'm, I'm sorry, their bios, you can, you know, to learn a little bit more about them. And also we have here, the list mm -hmm. of artists who are the marine life and the waters, right? The endangered areas there. Okay, so we're just gonna click on the gallery one to enter the gallery.
have how many of you were able to actually enter the gallery and sort of look around? I did. I did. That's great. Okay. I did. I did. Excellent. Was, excellent. Getting used to how to manipulate the cursor and get around that was a little bit of a challenge, but <laughs> oh, but you got yeah. the hang of it, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it it does take a little practice because, you know, we're not used to doing this stuff, but, you know, when it's there and you do it just like anything else, practice makes perfect. Okay, so now we can enter. Okay, so I'm going to just take that off because I know how to use that. And I'm also going to take off the catalog. It is at the bottom because we really don't need to see those. Okay, so now let's start in this corner here, which is a very whimsical piece. Julia, so is Julia here? No, that's okay. Th this is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna ask if the artist is here and if they're not, then I'll just move on. But I want you to see this. What do you guys think of this briefly? Isn't this, isn't this great? Beautiful. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. It, it, it is, it's, it's so whimsical. I mean, these, these animals, poor guys, they're endangered, but she's trying to put some positive fun into it. You know, it's like, we don't wanna see them gone you know okay. yeah but very very well done i thought mixed it I, together I feel like the feeling of there being lifted up uh, yes above yes yeah. yes I yes so they're, they're for me it's like oh they're being rescued <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> they're being rescued but the rhinoceros wow he's he's got the whole one all to himself there all of it and the elephant you wonder wow that's a real good balloon Right. <laughs> it's great. And then in the back, I think they're they're monkeys or something in yes. way in the back over here, right? Yeah. Two monkeys, yeah, and the zebra. And what are, these guys are the raccoons. Uh, yeah. So this, yeah. And this one's got his mouth open because I think he's yelling it at this one. I don't know. <laughs> Very nice. And and this is a nice size, twenty four by thirty, mixed media on board. And she did this a couple of years ago, which is sweet, very nice. And I really also like the these um, the dots and the stripes and the patterns. You know, she put a lot of beautiful work into this. Very nice. And even in the background, she's got it's just it's flat, yes, but everything else is very nice as far as the work. It's painterly. I feel like it's a little bit of a watercolor. Well, and I was thinking they were rising above the extinction, but I look at the title, it says Endangered Species Rising Toward Extinction. Oh. That's all another feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rising toward extinction. It's like, oh no. So now we, we have an upside down type of, of interpretation because I'm thinking they're rising above and they're getting away, right? And you see, so... So they're rising towards it. You wonder, well, well are they going to the sun? <laughs> I, don't I, know. I don't know. I don't know, you guys. But for me, even though, you know, an artist may title something, there's always room for interpretation for the viewer, right? I yes. mean, you, you, so for me, it's always going to be they're rising towards something good. Because if they're rising towards something bad, I would have thought that the colors would have been more gloomy, mm -hmm. you know, for me, that it would have been more gloomy colors. These colors for me are very, not as not festive, but you know, they're a little, they're light spirited. I, I see something different here. You do, what do you see? Yeah, I see like a, Maybe it's my imagination, but it's kind of like an interpretation of the Noah's, Noah's Ark. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, so they are trying to save themselves, but floating in the balloons. Mm -hmm. Yes. The, the Ark, yes. Yes, yes, that's true. That's true. 
Yeah, there are two the monkeys title, and two raccoons. The title but, throws you off a little bit, too. The right. Game over. Right. I, the, that has a little negative feel to it, but this looks like a little salvation to me when you see them yeah. floating off like right. that. It's right. It's salvation. Right. It, it does. It, yeah. So maybe, maybe, maybe uh, Julia put that title there so we could fight with her title and know that, <laughs> and know that no, we don't want them to go to extinction. We want, <laughs> we want them to rise above it. it. Right. Yeah. So if that was her intention. She pulled it off because see what we're doing. We're saying, no, we want them to be saved. We don't want them to go toward extinction. <laughs> so that's a more of a reality for us now. <laughs> Yes, rise, I, rise. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so all I'm doing is I'm clicking on the on the cursor to go to the next piece, which is Stephen's piece. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Sheldon, Sheldon. Why did I say Stephen? Sheldon. And Sheldon is on the piece. call. Yes, and Sheldon, Sheldon was our first place winner for this That's competition. He did, he did like three pieces and all pieces were very strong and very much about being in an art gallery. And I mean, he really took this theme and, and totally ran with it, you know. So Sheldon, please tell us about Tell us a little bit about yourself, first of all, and then talk about this piece. Uh, well, to put it all in a nutshell, <laughs> my life's <laughs> history is, uh, oh, and I have to uh, say before starting, my wife is just to the right of me because I'm an extremely low tech kind of person. Okay. And this is actually my first Zoom call. Okay. Oh my. Um, but uh, I've been painting, uh, uh, since I've been a uh, like five years old, if I can put it that way, drawing and uh, and painting. Wow! Mm -hmm. So for a very long time, and uh, it was always a big part of my life. Uh, although um, I stopped, I stopped my uh, artwork during my university years. That was the uh, only time I uh, ever put a hold on it, and. Um, then I ended up getting degrees, believe it or not, in uh, food science, microbiology, and anatomy. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. so for a number of years, I sold food ingredients to the food processors uh, throughout Canada. And then I switched to becoming uh, a real estate agent and I sold new condominiums for about 11 years. But during all this time, uh, I was uh, painting and uh, selling my work now and again. Uh, I found out in about 1986 that someone liked one of my uh, pieces. It was a still life uh, so much that they wanted to buy it. Mm -hmm. And so from then on, I've sold a number of pieces over the years. Mm -hmm. And I was doing surrealism in watercolors for uh, quite a few years as well. And I... Uh, switched to acrylics on canvas, which um, it was also a water-based medium in effect. And so it wasn't a great leap for me to, to uh, do that. And uh, when I, I hate this word, retired, um, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, have been uh, painting full time for the past seven and a half years now. Mm. And my two areas of concentration have been uh, landscapes which I've always uh, been involved with and always liked, and uh, surrealism, which I've always been involved with. Mm -hmm. um, so those are my two areas. And um, well, not to sound overly uh, negative about it, um, I guess the biggest issue facing mankind today is our climate change and the, and the environment. Uh, unfortunately, there are 500 vertebrate animals right now that are on the edge of extinction. And of, of that 250, there are only a hundred left of them on the planet. Wow. So I decided to uh, do this uh, little series 
in uh, in galleries, if it, as it were. And um, I don't know if you can see it. Oh no, I don't have it behind me. Um, but um, I did this series of um, animals in galleries. And uh, in this one, uh, there were, as you can see, various paintings of the uh, Arctic in mm -hmm. the gallery. Mm -hmm. And the two paintings on either end of the gallery uh, were uh, reproductions of a fairly famous Canadian artist named Lauren Harris. And uh, I decided to uh, use the uh, polar bears, obviously, because of the uh, canvases that I used on the walls of the gallery. I almost put in the bear, uh, the statue of the bear as an afterthought, but then it uh, seemed to work out fairly well. Some of these surrealistic pieces, I know exactly what's gonna, what it's gonna look like. Mm -hmm. to add and others kind of develop I paint them over time and uh, the mother bear is in effect uh, glancing at the um, stone carving of the bear and uh, you know that's why I uh, entitled it now now we are um, now we are free yeah yeah it is uh, wow exquisite it's very beautiful i i think your color sense is spot on you, you you the detail of this is just very delicious i mean even the lights at the top it's very architectural in 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 a way so i get the feeling about architecture through your work so but there's a balance between the realism and as you said the surrealism you know because you wouldn't normally have a family of polar bears in that gallery, right? So, the, but, and also we can, we can clearly see the paintings on the wall are about the ice. But the curious thing, I, I looked and I, you know, looked at that title, Now We Are Free. Yeah, it, um, I, I, I chose it, uh, sorry to interrupt, Carolyn. No. I chose it in part as well to make it seem as if they're almost walking out of this scenery that's on the gallery walls. Mm. I have a question, Sheldon. Mm -hmm. um, I was curious why you put the air conditioning units in. Are they symbolic? You know what? They may look like air conditioning units, but they're just um, uh, negative or blank spaces. Um, okay. They may have been air conditioning units in the uh, image I used to uh, paint the gallery part of it. Um, but it, it wasn't intended that way, actually. Okay. So, so those are just, in a sense, dark spots or shadows or things that are just a dark area. And, yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. And the hanging lights happen to be in front of uh, those areas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I saw it and I thought of there be an air conditioning units and I was thinking of the Freon and how that affect the environment and I was wondering if that was part of your statement when you uh, made that composition. Yeah, no, it, it wasn't intended on, on uh -huh. being air conditioning uh, units. Beautiful piece. It's yeah. a thoughtful piece. Yeah. yeah, I have it actually in back of me on my uh, display panel here. Right, I saw um, it. <laughs> Beautiful. I'm, I'm not sure um, how well you can uh, yeah I can see it yeah, we can see it in the back yeah beautiful um, beautiful mm -hmm. I guess for most artists most visual artists um, unless you are wildly successful you end up creating an inventory so mm -hmm. in our house uh, we use the walls and these display panels in back of me as cheap storage I tell people <laughs> yes they work though, they work. Wow. Does anyone else have any questions for Sheldon about this piece? Well, I'm, I'm, in, this is Winifred. The idea of, of doing a gallery scene is novel, isn't it, Sheldon? I don't think I've ever seen a painting and then the background, they, you're actually in a gallery. I, I love uh, it. I, I mean, there have been some of the uh, 
famous or great artists in history who have uh, done not surrealism, but they've done paintings in galleries. Uh -huh. uh, uh, maybe I'm one of the first ones to uh, do a series like this in a gallery. And when Carolyn moves this further along, we'll mm -hmm. come to the uh, original painting that started all this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually the one next to it here is the first uh, one I did in this gallery series. And uh, I had called this one, in fact, Endangered. And so it shows um, a, a leopard that's loose in a gallery with the uh, paintings and images of uh, various other African animals on the walls. So mm -hmm. that that's uh, that's realistic part of it, obviously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so and, what's your message by being putting these animals in the gallery? What is the message that that you're trying to... <laughs> when it comes to surrealism, I leave it mostly up to the viewers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they, they're um, in the world of their own, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. Well, one, one of uh, the artists I always admired was uh, Salvador Dali. And he mm -hmm. was uh, one of the masters of surrealism, of course, from the past. And uh, some of his paintings, uh, people said, well, one of the things he said was he spent a lifetime trying to convince people that he was crazy. But in fact, he was the furthest thing from crazy. Mm. And uh, so this is um, my, my uh, way of uh, creating surrealism and mm -hmm. also putting a spotlight on these endangered animals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, I placed this, these pieces not in the surrealism abstract section because of the fact that it's, it's very realistic as far as the imagery goes, you know what I mean? It's like you can see. So um, some of the abstract realism, I'm sorry, surrealism is a little different, but th this is surrealistic. So it, it, the hardest thing to group the artwork together was to decide which, you know, which pieces should go where. And because this is so animal centric, I wanted this to go with the animals. So I hope you approve, Sheldon. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Not a problem, Carolyn. Okay. Um, I, I might also mention that I, technique-wise, I use a special way of coating the painting. Um, so with acrylics, there are various uh, coatings that you can uh, coat the painting with. Mm -hmm. And so what I've done, and I did it also in the uh, previous painting. So the paintings on the walls have a high gloss finish and the rest of the painting is the uh, medium or satin finish. Okay. And so, so when you look at this, the, the human eye may not immediately notice it, uh, but the paintings will actually pop a little more that way. Okay. Nice, nice. All right. Beautiful. Any other comments, guys, that you want to make about Sheldon's work? Okay. Let's see. We zoom out. Let's try to get to the wall. All you have to do is like touch the piece and it'll zoom over to it. Okay. Now this is Robin Bulger. Is she here? No, okay. So we're gonna, that's, I just love the colors here, you know, painted wolf. Beautiful, beautiful. James Kiesel, is he here? Florida Panthers, wow. Endangered for sure. Yeah, yeah. Out of the shadows, Florida Panther. Yeah. Wow. This particular piece at first I was put I was gonna put it on 
the um, floral and fauna, but this again is so animal centric. I think that the panther, even though the leaves of the plants are so beautiful, it's really the panther who steals the show. So that's why the panther is here with the animals. This beautiful, beautiful piece. And here's another one. Natalia, is Natalia here? No. This one is Wild Spirit of North Carolina, the bobcat. <laughs> wow. Can you imagine the bobcat next to that? Uh, looks yeah. like the egret or this, right? <laughs> Interesting. And they're looking at whoever's taking a picture. And then there's the owl up here on the left at the top. Very nice. What, what I thought was really interesting about this piece was that the right side of it is grayscale mm -hmm. and the left side of it is in color. Mm -hmm. But it totally works. It works. It works. What do you guys think? Yeah. It gives a lot of depth. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. That, that it, it's yeah. very true. I, you know, when I was in undergrad, I told my instructor, I said, you could create, you could create space with color. You could, you know, because he kept talking about the grayscale is the only thing that'll do that. And I, 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 I just felt that wasn't true, you know. And so I went ahead and did my thing. But this, this piece is, to me, one of the testaments. Yes, there's grayscale. Yes, there's, there's, there's space. But color brings it even closer to you. Yes, yes, the trees are of a smaller size, so you feel like they're further away. But still, I think spiritually, the color brings it closer to you. Mm -hmm. I wish we had the artist here to talk about that because it's not only um, two totally different techniques, but um, how you feel about that painting, what's in the forefront that's colored and why the background is great. Yes, yes, yes. So for me, he's putting the importance on the animals um, more so even than the water, which is the lakes. He could have put that in a soft, you know, gray blue or something like that, but that too is quite grayscale. So, but it just works, you know, it just works. Very, very well done. Yeah. And here we have, Sonny Franson. Is Sonny here? Mountain lions have families that are vulnerable when adults are hunted without discretion. No hunting, please. <laughs> Very nice. Beautiful. Yeah, oil. I was going to say this definitely looks like an oil piece. What do you guys feel about this one? I mean, what stands out the most? I thought what was interesting about it is the softness of the colors mm -hmm. in the background. It's very soft. Mm -hmm. And I think there's cubs in the background there, right? Yes, yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go in. So, oops, sorry. So you could see. Oh, I didn't even yeah, see You that. see them. Yeah, you see yeah. them there? There are two. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So so the, the the opening in the little cave that they have in there, very, very, very well done. Very well done. All right. So let me pull out. Interesting. Yeah. And that was an oil painting as well. Yeah. Okay, Michael. Is Michael here? Futori, Futorti, Bengal tiger. We had many tigers in the show and everybody had their own rendition of the tiger. 
This one, I believe the artist used the, the negative space quite well to turn it into the stripes of the tiger, you know? Very beautiful. Exactly. Yeah. That gaze, that stare, <laughs> it's like, I dare you. <laughs> and that's only 12 inches by 18 inches. But it, it looks like a big piece, even though it's a smaller piece. Yeah. Here we have another tiger. Oops, sorry. Yeah. Now this is interesting. This one's called, is Joe Agnes Watson here? No. Okay, this one, this, is, this one's very interesting. It's got a basket of stuff. It says mixed media, electronic drawing and collage. Yes, yeah, so this is a collage I, I think it's put together quite very interestingly, very well. Um, it's like, I wish you were here so she can tell us about the objects in here. She's got a clock, she's got what looks like pumpkin or squash or something. And then a basket of other stuff. I don't know, does anybody know what those are? Looks like lines. Oops. Paper cut, I don't know. Yeah, apricots or little apricots. Apricots, okay. Little apples, little crab apples. Or something. Oh, okay. It's hard to pull that all together to figure out what the message. Right, is. Right, right. And then she's got this clock, and then also like a, a champagne glass. <laughs> it's like, okay. I wish she had a, a narrative that we could put together. It says, can be executed in oil pastel or watercolor with similar results. Okay, it doesn't help us to figure out what the objects are. It says, balancing nature and human needs. Okay. So maybe the champagne glass has something to do with... Where, where does champagne come from? Does anybody know? Grapes. Yeah. From grapes? Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's made from uh, wine grapes. Okay, champagne. Trans transformed, yeah. Ah, uh, okay. France. Okay. I'm just trying to, to tie in the new human need for, for champagne with, with the animals. Okay. <laughs> it's just fun to try to figure this stuff out. <laughs> Anybody have ideas? I'd love to hear it. Sharon, is, is Sharon here? <laughs> it says, I love this young lion cub, and I call oh, him Patty, although we didn't meet in person. Aw, <laughs> little Patty. <Aww. laughs> That's my kid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here we have another, this one, this one I thought was just exquisite because it, yeah. it, it takes up the entire, the entire canvas, right? Yes. And, and, it, and it goes outside of the canvas. I love those types of setups because it gives you a sense of space, even if, so it doesn't matter how small or big the ground that you put the work on, as long as you don't put everything into that box of a, of a space, the viewer has space to breathe and, you know, and just to, to understand, okay, you kind of know where it's going, you know, and it, it makes it more, um, uh, to me, a little, a little stronger effect. And also we can see, we can see the texture on here. Let's see what she's got acrylic and mixed media. Yeah, maybe, maybe the mixed media, she's brought in some, some different objects or straw or something like that. I don't know, but you can see it. Let's see, I can't, yeah, yeah. You can see it a little closer here. Could that be gesso or gel medium? It could be. It could be. 
but when when an artist says mixed media and doesn't really spell out what it what the mixed media yeah. is, you're just sort of left guessing. So mm -hmm. for me, I know whenever whenever I have mixed media, I just instead of putting mixed media, I just put the ingredients. You know what is used in the painting. This actually helps the collector know how better to care for the piece. If you've put something in the painting that needs special care, the, the, the collector won't know. They won't know. So just, you know, I, I always err on the side of just say what it is you've got in here. <laughs> you know? But some artists feel like it's giving their secrets away. So, so that's <laughs> fine. That's fine. So, you know, but when somebody collects the artwork, tell the collector what it is so that they can care for it. Any any comments, you guys, on, on this one? Great texture. Yeah, yeah. Mary Renner, 30 by 30. Maybe that's what I like to say, wild tiger. It's very nice. So this was the tiger wall. And I believe this is Sheldon's other piece, yeah. It looks like you put all the cats together. I did. <laughs> I did. Makes sense. Yes, I did. I did. Um, what are the doing? Some of my uh, wife's relatives had um, gone gone to New Delhi in India, uh -huh. and they uh, took some photos in uh, some of the streets of uh, parts of New Delhi. Mm -hmm. And uh, this sounds crazy to us, but uh, over there businesses in between the buildings send electrical wires across uh, for power. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess some of these or many of these businesses are illegal, but oh. the government turns a blind eye uh -huh. because, uh, you know, everybody's making money. Okay. Uh, and so um, they took a photo of one of these streets and that's what I based the alleyway on with the uh, wires in between the buildings. Okay, okay. And uh, so the, the uh, tiger is um, in essence a mural on a mm -hmm. wall mm -hmm. and the three elephants are escaping down the alleyway. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I called this one, show me the way. All right, it was beautiful. Thank you. And and the 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 backsides of the elephants, they look like they're squeezing through the streets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they would just barely fit through. They just barely fit. I remember when I was in in India and I was crossing this little bridge, and something butt me butt me in the back. And I turned around and I almost had a heart attack. It was this huge cow. <laughs> you, know? you have to understand, I come from Brooklyn, you know. So to have a cow just in the street was the, the shock of my life. And that it was, I guess it was trying to tell me to move along, you know, <laughs> to move along. So that, that's what I think of when I see these elephants at school squeezing through these small streets. It's very interesting. Well, I put these uh, images together because of the fact that the uh, alleyway and the uh, buildings were from India. So I uh -huh. figured tigers and elephants kind of go together in that uh, area. Right, right, right. Very nice. Okay, let me keep going. Does anybody have any other comments or questions to Shelton about Show Me the Way? Great piece. Yeah, yeah it was beautiful. Okay. James, is James here? Okay. This one is just beautiful. This one is an acrylic. The snow leopard is one of the most endangered species. Wow. It's beautiful. It's it fun. is. Yeah, yeah, it is. That's, that's beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, yeah, that's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Well, 14 by 18. He made this last year. Hasty Descent. Wow. That's just gorgeous. That, that green, that... 
the stone, you know, it just, you know, it's so simple, but it's not flat. It, it, you, you do have a sense of space. You do have a sense of texture. And movement. And movement, yes. It's just gorgeous. Beautiful. Bengal tiger, multicolored, multi-layered paper. Okay. Panthea tigris, the Bengal tiger. Tiger. Okay. That's a great interpretation, actually. Mm. Okay. Chinese year of the tiger. Yeah, it's represented by the extremely endangered Bengal tiger. Yeah. Beautiful. Very nice. I don't think Ida is on the call. Ida, are you on the call? Ida is, is a wonderful artist and she's very committed to her artwork and her artistry and she's she's been a member of art impact for so long i really you know and actually i believe i believe she, it was also her who went with us to rome italy yes 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 yes, yes. so i'm sorry she's not on the call today but this is this is beautiful very simple piece but you know very nice very clear and she did this almost 10 years ago or actually 10, yeah 11 years ago wow beautiful oh it reminds you of, of um, wizard of oz a little bit yes <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. and marvit she marvit is from canada as well sheldon so i'm sorry she's not on the call with us Living my life as strong as my father would, expressing myself in different colors, shades, and forms because I am the daughter of a king and should be kept alive, not relegated, bold and free to live in my habitation or the wild, not captured or told what or how to do it, my skin taken away. I am just me and should be free. Oh, what a beautiful narrative. Beautiful. Wow. And Wanda, this is this is your piece. You're here. <laughs> Wanda is a wonderful artist who also went with us to Rome, Italy. And she's on the call, and this is her piece, Tiger to Montage. So, so Wanda, tell us a little bit about yourself and this piece. Well, I'm a, a Wanda Spence. I'm a Washingtonian, and I've been doing art, I guess, as the, many of us have since I was a child. And um, I have a true connection with nature. Um, God just made me that way. And I love animals, and, and I always wished I could have lived in the in the in the wild with them and and i think i said lord one day when i come to be to heaven maybe they'll turn me into a horse or something i don't know <laughs> but um, but I, I just i have a passion for for animals and for nature and um and this is the second uh, i have a montage a tiger number one and then this one was the, the second one that i did and this one was done for a um during a fundraiser at when I was working for Central Union Mission, uh, homeless shelter for men, and we had two artists there. So I started this piece there, and it took me, I guess, four or five months to complete it. And the gentleman bought it, um, who who bit, bid on it at that that particular fundraiser, and wow. it's hanging, it's hanging actually in Pennsylvania right now. But it's of course a montage. I have I love montage the subject matter because it it takes you and puts you in different mediums. So of course this is. Um, acrylic and it's magazine scraps and construction paper and mm -hmm. the interesting thing is that you sit down and you cut up all these little scraps of paper and then you determine well okay where the colors fit so each one of those pieces of paper you see on there it it took me 
I, you know, I looked at it and I decided, well, what is this, my friend going to look like here? And, and then, uh, and then I decided that it was going to take two years <laughs> if I did the tree <laughs> and, and I did everything else. So I decided, well, you know what, the tree and the greenery and everything in the background was going to be acrylic. So, <laughs> because I, you can at least approach that uh, a little faster right. than you can put together all those pieces of paper. But, um, but anyway, so I'm, I love it. I've done two montages in my lifetime. So mm -hmm. um, I, I just, I love that medium and um, really like it. And I enjoyed doing it. And I'm just thankful that, you know, it was selected to be in the show. Great, yeah. great. Welcome. Does anybody have any comments or questions for Wanza about this piece? That's a great piece. Yes. Very nice. Yes. Very creative. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. Well done. Um, I have a question. I have a question for you, Wanza. Is the is the tree where the tiger is laying on? Did you do that with paint? Is that is that what you painted? I actually, is that the yeah, I actually, yeah, I actually drew it on with pencil, but you know, as I sketched it on the paper. Okay. Um, how I wanted it to, to look, and it's sort of a broken tree where he's grabbing, he's jumped up there and grabbed the hold, and he's laying there resting the tree. So it was actually drawn on by pencil, and then I painted it in. Okay, um, okay. Mm -hmm. Very, very nice, very nice. All right. Any other questions or comments about Tiger 2 montage? Okay. Well, thank you, Wanda. Thank you for your artistry, for putting this together, and for staying creative. <laughs> All that, all that motivation, send it all. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we have to motivate each other because leave it to the news, forget about it, you know. <laughs> That's the last thing the news will do for you is to motivate you to, uh, well, actually, you know, for me, it does motivate me. It motivates me to keep going. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Good you know? It's like we got it. We can't stop now. Okay, now this one is by Igor Zusev. Is Igor here? No. This one is just is just so beautiful. It's so creative. Uh oh, somebody's trying to get in, but um, is it on paper? It says it's it's it just says acrylic. It doesn't say oh, I've got to cover it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like it's um like it's on something else, like it's on a board or something almost. Yeah. But like but I, I could tell whatever it's on, it's it's gotta be something heavy because because there's a lot of of um marking and I could tell a lot of going back and forth with whatever he used, you know, whether it's a brush or being acrylic, but still it looks I don't know, Maybe. some of those brush strokes. Metal, maybe it's all metal. Yeah, it could be. It could be. It actually looks layered, whereas yeah, um, yeah, carved into the bottom layer. Yeah, let me see what he's got <laughs> here. It says memory elephant. This piece, this was a piece I made after seeing all those elephants dying from poisoned water. Oh dear, it is sad. Yeah, that's sad. Wow. Yeah, I feel sad about it. I mean, the yeah. color of the the skin is not that. Uh, yeah. You can feel it's almost either dead or is dying. Right, right, yeah. right, right. But the glory of the elephant remains, even. Yeah, you know, it's just I don't know his ear. At least he's got his tusk still, and that wasn't taken away. Very it looks nice. like you put the background and made that the skin color of the elephant and that makes it more yes yes i know what you I mean, mean mm -hmm. sickly because mm -hmm. you see the skin of the elephant in the background and the skin of the elephant that's there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and look at his eye little eye uh, I think they said that the, the elephant, the, see, is the elephant and the whale, those two 
have have the next to the large the, close to as large a human being's brain something like that i i want to study elephants more because when it comes to family they're like they know how to how to survive as a family you know the things that they do and they watch their little ones and it's just i've seen some some TV shows with the elephants and how they herd together and, and protect each other, even from the most dangerous you know, lions and tigers. Yeah. Interesting. I uh, actually did a show, an exhibit on elephants. Um, mm -hmm. It was my first endangered show and uh, that was in 2015. And uh -huh. in 2015, elephants were being slaughtered at 50 a day. Oh dear. Uh, a day, it's up to a hundred a day. Um, and where, where is this happening? In Africa. In, oh, the whole continent. Okay. Yeah, wow. I want that trade that, that I'm trained. Wow. Is, is it the tusks that they're taking? Yes, they're just killing them just for the tusks. For the tusks, yeah. Yeah, here's this one. This one I did see a um, a documentary on the, the, when they take the tusk. That means they take away a parent from a little one, you know. So they have these places where sort of like orphanage for the little for the baby elephants. But the baby elephants get very attached to their new mother, and if and the new mother is a human being. If she goes away, then the baby gets really sick, you know. So they, you know, they the, the ties that they have to whoever is taking care of them is extremely strong. You can tell we live in a crazy world because in Russia they're trying to clone the woolly mammoth. What? <laughs> Talking yeah. about woolly mammoth. Look at this guy. Wow. Is, is Alyssa here? No, okay. But this is beautiful. This, this one's got blood on it. Yeah, it is blood. Yeah. Really strong piece. Yeah, really, really well done piece. Well done piece. Great use of space in this mm -hmm. one. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Feels it all up, but it doesn't feel like it's filled up. Right. And the detail of the, the tusk and the trunk, especially the ripples along, the, along that. And then it goes up to the nose, to the forehead, and it turns into white lines instead of the black lines. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. And this one, this one is sold, Alyssa. Very beautiful. And here we have another elephant. So, I mean, every elephant is different, even in painting, right? Yes. One of the things I love to see or to look at in any painting that has an eye in it is to look at the eye. Mm -hmm. Because I know the artist spends so much time looking at the piece that I it almost is a reflection of the artist, almost. Mm. It's like looking into the looking into the eye of the painting is almost looking into the eye of the artist as he or she sees what he or she is painting. So I get I get like a a feeling about the artist as well. Does that make sense or am I just a little off the wall? <laughs> Barbara is here. She's here, Barbara. Yes, <laughs> you are. <laughs> my elephant was the mother and the, the baby elephant too. And this oh, is my okay. I'm sorry. I was so used to the the, the people not being here. I'm so sorry. Will you, do you want me to go back to the baby and the mother? No, that's okay. I think you summed it up. My point. <laughs> okay. Well, how about you tell us about elephant? <laughs> well, this is a little darker in that you know, typical, the elephant in the room, and this is the yes. thing you talk about, and yes. it was mainly because of the poaching. And I wanted it to be in the shadows. Um, 
just to draw some attention to what we overlook and the horror that's going on with this. Mm -hmm. And I, I think we all, we all realize what's happening with elephants and trophy hunting is yeah. another thing and the poaching for the toss. It's just yeah. horrific. Yeah. So that's what this was, just a little darker statement. The mother and baby was in a, a lighter bat because my cat yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it to be part of it. Yeah. Uh, but that was mainly what this was. This is just okay. a, a portrait with a little darker theme to it mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it is an atrocity. Mm -hmm. But this piece has a very strong presence. And, and for me, it's because of the eye. Yeah, you know, probably without so. that eye, the presence wouldn't be as strong. You know, elephants I mean, have such an intelligence. They're such a, a, a family and community into yeah. themselves. They mourn their dead, yeah. protect their, their baby. So yes, there's a yeah. lot of intelligence behind that eye too as well. Yeah, yeah. It's an oil painting. Mm -hmm. And I jokingly have it as sold, but one of my children claimed it immediately. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that that counts, right? inventory a little. My mom, she was the one who bought my first painting. You know, they oh, count. Family counts. You know, I came from a family of artists. My mother was an artist, so I'm second generation. And this, ah, okay, okay. it was not my initial career choice. <laughs> right, right. Hey, but, uh, but you know, if you're an artist, you got to do your art. You know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was in corporate America for, for most of my life, you know, but I always did my art and I always sold my art, you know. There's well, I did the same thing. Yeah. I did accounting. So talk about the right brain, left brain conflict. Right, right. <laughs> uh, I now have a, a partner in a gallery. So it's, um, okay. you know, it's my life. I finally have my me time to do exactly what I always wanted to do. Well, congratulations on that. Thank you. <laughs> It's, it's not easy to navigate as an artist and to no, survive, but, you know, but you, if you keep, if you keep your, your intention to be a creative being, you're going to be a creative being, period, yeah. you know? Yeah, so exactly. thank you. Thank you for, for being a part of this exhibit. And this was my first time. And actually I have done animal paintings for quite a while. I have a whole animal series. Mm -hmm. And somebody sent me, another artist sent me this link and said, you have to get involved with Art Impact. And <laughs> just my forte. This was the area that I was so con so passionate about. So thank you for letting Great. me join this group. Great. And oh, art you're of welcome. It means a you're lot. Welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. That's what, that's what Art Impact is here to do, to facilitate a reason for the artist to create their art. Not that you need a reason, but it's always good to have a deadline. It's always good to have a place to show yeah. it, you know, and possibly sell it. So b being that we're talking about sales, let me just show you guys something. For each, each in the gallery, each piece, right, it is connected to this, this should say, um, not just inquire, but purchase. Oh, I see why. It's because this one is sold already. But if yours wasn't sold, it would say, um, perch, um, it would Plus. say buy or something like that. And you click on that and it would take you to the page where this <laughs> is for sale. So I try to make it easy for the collectors to collect and, and you know, and in one of our shows, they did. Oops, what happened? What did I do? Did I click? On? Did I? I didn't. Do you? Do you guys? I'm still sharing my screen, right? Yes. yes. Okay, great. But somehow I think. Oh, here we go. Okay, I got scared there for a second. I was like, "Where'd it go?" Okay. All right. I think because I clicked on inquire, it took me to like to, to send an email. So anybody who wants, say if they wanted a similar piece, they can inquire and they send me an email and I would, you know, then, then I would contact you and let you know somebody's interested in a similar piece. 
All right. Does anybody have any questions or comments about Carol. Barbara's elephant or her other, the, the one with the Carol. family one? I'm not mute. Which was Carol. this one, right? Mm -hmm. Barbara did that one too. Yeah. I love the tree in the back too. <laughs> uh, Carol. Yeah. Well, it actually was not to put the emphasis on the background, and I'm uh, just trying to, you know, it's the elephant, the mother it, and baby stand right. up, it, and that was just to make that statement too. Right. But it's a good, it's a good, it's a good background. It's not too overwhelming, and it's, no, but it's not true. blank either. You know, it's good that it's just not blank. Yeah, <laughs> you know, right. Give some context. Very good. Okay. okay. All right. Now this one, Telagio Baptista, is is he or she here? This piece is just gorgeous. Look at those tusks. Very real. Wow. I hope nobody touches that elephant. I hope the <laughs> elephant is <laughs> because if I were a poacher, this was the type of 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 elephant that they'd be looking for right because the tusks are so majestic yeah. wow and look it says these majestic animals are declining yet fighting for their lives of freedom wow beautiful beautiful how they depicted the water the water even is gentle Watercolor, wow, watercolor on paper. Gorgeous. Yeah, wow, 2019. Okay, I know we gotta keep going. It's just, okay. Now, I'm not sure if my friend Amanda is here. Is Amanda here? Amanda showed with us in, in uh, Pepco. Edison Place Gallery in DC a couple of times. She's a beautiful, um, she, she's like in, in productions of, of shows, you know, like Broadway, not maybe not Broadway shows, but, but acting productions and so forth. And she does photography and she'll construct a scene just so she can take a photograph of it. So these pieces she put together so she could take a photograph of it. And it says photography forward slash acrylic print with metal posts. So when she showed her work, she actually um, mounts it on a metal sheet. So it's sort of like photography on metal. But she's got here acrylic print, so I'm not sure if the if the ink that's used to print the photograph, it, if if it's possible that there's some acrylic in it, I'm not sure. So, but these are really really interesting here. Let me go to this one. But these are not endangered species, right there from the. Right, they're not, these are already dead. And, and I'm not sure, uh, I'm, I'm not sure who these animals are exactly, but here, let's read this one. The animals in my images are naturally sourced that had died from natural causes and or are from the Pleistocene era. I have chosen to adorn and memorize these particular skulls in remembrance and appreciation. I wanted to honor all animals, honor their spirit, and thank them for their role on this earth. It also stands as a gentle reminder of what is at stake. If we do not honor the life that is now, there just will be no life. Well said there. So, so the fact of endangered species, well, these are the ones who have passed because of 
maybe the ice age or something, but let's look at this one. This looks like a bull, right? Yeah, I think she's she's saying the same narrative for each piece. Yeah. Yeah, this says grizzly, grizzly. So this was a grizzly bear. All right, well, so we it looks like we finished this, the animals for for this um, for this gallery, and I know we got to go much faster than I've been going, but let's take a break from the animals now and go to the marine life. Okay, let's start here. And what I'll do is we'll, we'll look at the works, right? We'll look at the works and if the artist isn't present and if nobody has anything to say, we'll keep going. So that way we can maybe get everything done by 8.30. Okay, so is AC Rain here? No, okay. Anybody have any comments or to say anything about Delta? No, okay. A mermaid. Okay. This one. Leo? To Jack? Photography? I'm just seeing it. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is photography, yeah. Taken on a whale watching tour in New Greenland. Beautiful photograph. Wow. So this is Heather. Is Heather here? Darkness of the ocean. This, she's saying this is what the ocean would look like if there were few sea lions. Okay. Tara, is Tara here? No, okay. Stella the sea turtle, <laughs> very beautiful. Any comments on this one? Interesting pattern. Yeah, yeah. It looks like it's a bird combination. I know, I know. Yeah, like so they've been thinking about birds and all of that. Didn't right. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I'm sorry Tara isn't here. She's um, one of the artists who is self-taught and she uses art to help her heal from the domestic violence that she went through for many years. So she's doing a really great job using art to help her through. Yeah, beautiful piece. And this one is this year. I believe she, she did this piece just for the show. This is beautiful. Unicia, is she here? No. Yeah, this piece is just gorgeous gorgeous yeah. gorgeous piece and this is 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 36 by 36 so it's a nice large piece and look at all the detail oh my goodness yeah. <laughs> and she says i had i read this narrative and she pretty much says this is a painting a self portrait of her so this is onicia yeah yeah and how she feels so connected i believe i believe this has to do with the West Indies, I'm not sure. I feel deeply for our earth, but at the same time, hopeless for her. Our human presence has only grown and plagued her with countless atrocities. The self-portrait, yeah. The self-portrait is a reflection of myself as equal to nature instead of above it. I respect her and all her wonders and I know her powers. I imagine a space where we are made much smaller and our impact on earth is far less extensive, if impactful at all. 
As a human, I stand apart, surrounded by my plastic and cut trees, using waste, I'm sorry, using vast amounts of energy in exchange for comforts and amenities. The octopus in his aquarium stares at me. Where will I stand when the earth ceases to be? Wow. Great piece. Beautiful. Deep. <clears throat> Igor, is Igor here? I think he had another piece, right? Igor just said. Flying frog. <laughs> One, one piece. Yeah, flying frog. Frogs, especially flying frogs, are very susceptible to even minute environmental changes and currently are being wiped out by the Amazonian logging. So the flying frog is being wiped out by the cutting down of all the trees in the Amazon. Mm. And I know the Amazon is a big part of our ecosystem on the planet. <sighs> yeah, they sometimes uh, call it the lungs of the earth. Yes, that's right. That's right. Jack, is Jack here? I thought he was here earlier. Okay. Yeah, Jack's here. Yes, I thought he, I thought you were here, Jack. Do you want to talk a little bit about your piece? Yeah, I'm a, I am a 70 year old artist and sculptor. I painted and uh, done portraits, acrylic paintings, uh, uh, abstracts, and right now I'm doing a lot of sculpture work. This particular piece signifies uh, our oceans. We do terrible things to our oceans and just about everything in the ocean is endangered along with seahorses and they're mm -hmm. very tiny little animals. And this is a bronze, it's a 20 gauge. And if you're looking at the picture, I have it right here in front of wow. me. Wow. It's a 20 gauge expanded metal Mm -hmm. uh, that has three dimensions and it's on a wooden base that you can see here. Okay. And it has the ability to turn on the base. Ah. The, uh, it's brazed together and it's heat colored. Um, and it's just one of the sculptures that I felt like doing. I do a lot of animal sculptures. I'm into cats. And <laughs> I've done a lot of cat sculptures. Uh, so that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just doing a lot of sculptures, outside sculptures, smaller sculptures like you see here. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've always been involved in art. I'm a retired engineer and I can get out of that that uh, discipline and now do do the artwork that I that I really enjoy. Beautiful. Can can you show it up again? Your your seat your horse of the sea. Yeah, beautiful. beautiful. Uh, well, that the uh, it's a twenty gauge twenty gauge metal that you use a sandbag and a and a mallet to expand it. Oh. and stretch the metal to give it a three-dimension look mm -hmm. so it's wider in the centers and then I use the braze brazing rod uh, brass brazing rod to weld the two pieces together and it gives it a color okay and you can see the outside edges are all gold and then you take the torches and you heat the metal and you can bring out the reds and the blues and the greens ah oh. Okay. So when it cools, so when it cools, is that the 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 gold color that you showed us just now? Is that right. the color? Right. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. All right. Does anybody have any questions for Jack? I do. You don't use any chemicals to get those colors, those shades no, no. in it? 
no, nothing. That's just a plain 20 gauge sheet metal heated with a oxyacetylene torch. And depending on how long you keep the torch in a certain part of the metal, it'll start slowly changing different colors, reds, greens, and just flow the torch over it and you can get all the colors in the sculpture. Mm -hmm. Nice. Very nice. Any other questions for Jack? And Carolyn, thank you very much. I'm, I really appreciate being in your show. Oh, you're welcome, Jack. You you bring you bring the metal to the show. You bring the sculpture. You <laughs> right, right. I we we all are visual artists, but you know it's 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 very nice to see because personally for me it it motivates me to think about maybe you know to do some sculpture or to do some three-dimensional art you know what i mean it's just knowing another sculptor or or listening to you or even learning some of your techniques and or what's possible you know because when when i went to art school it wasn't so much they're teaching you how to be an artist they're just teaching you the different the different um, items you can use to create your work, you know? So when you bring this, it, it's like, wow, it opens up another dimension of possibility for not just me, but I'm sure the other artists that are, that's on the, the call right now. I mean, is that true guys? Yes. It's, you always, in, you always, ch well, for me, I change what I'm doing all the time. Years ago, I was a portrait artist. I did nothing but children's portraits and graphic and uh, oils and acrylics. And then to abstracts, great big abstracts that are just wildly abstract. And then slowly I've gotten into the metal sculpture work now. So I have a studio and a garage with all the metal working equipment and that's what I do. Good, well, we love it. I mean, do, what do you guys think? I think it's amazing how artists evolve. Yes. We've all started in one direction and gone in several more in our careers, and it's all part of the exploration. Right. It's wonderful. You're doing what creative. you, what you as a person want to bring to everybody else. Right, right. And that's why everybody here, it's just wonderful what we're all doing with the help mm -hmm. of Carol and it's great. Yeah. yeah, thank you. And I think Unicia just came on board. Unicia, can you hear us? Maybe she doesn't have her, um, she's the one who did this piece here. Oh, the beautiful piece. Yeah, yeah. Unicia, I, so beautiful. Do you have your Do you have your um, speaker on? Your sound on? I think. Can you hear me? Yes. Now we can hear you. We just passed your work, and I saw that you just came in. So, um, please tell us a little bit about this piece. We all love it. <laughs> um. Uh, <laughs> where to begin? Um, it's, it's interesting because I, I saw um, the, the documentary, my octopus teacher, right after I did this, and I just fell in love with octopi all over again. But wow. um, I started a portrait series, and this one in particular speaks to how humans, um, even, even those of us who recognize um, what we're doing to our planet and how we're destroying um, our natural resources and our plant life and animals, we still make this huge impact negatively. And so I was doing a self-portrait of myself, recognizing that I want to make a change and I want to do things to help save our planet. But at the same time, I'm, you know, I'm still surrounded by things in my house, things made of plastic. I still go out and, you know, eat and things are served in um, non-biodegradable materials. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, seeing how this particular picture was a picture of an octopus in an aquarium. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't in his natural environment and, oh. and the common octopus, they're actually small. Mm -hmm. So I made myself... Um, more relative to its size mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. to show that, no, I am not 
the dominant creature on earth. <laughs> mm-hmm. I am here. I'm here to support your life just as you support my life. Mm-hmm. So, Wow, very good. Well, tell us a tiny little bit. We, we're sort of running out of time as we're getting closer to 830 and we haven't gone to the last um, gallery yet. But um, if you guys are willing to hang out, I sure am. But Unicia, tell us about your your art background as far as because this work is so well done oh my goodness you're like master of your craft here acrylic on canvas and the detail that you have on the piece you take such care to to capture the octopus yes you're this is self-portrait but you're also making a portrait of the octopus you know, and and also the 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 marine life around it, even the whale in the background we can see. How you know where where I'm just curious. Where did tell us a little bit about your art background? Like, how long have you been painting? Um, actually, I do art quilts. <laughs> okay, okay. It's, but this is perfect. <laughs> much um it was a challenge for myself to get back into painting i majored in fine art so i mm-hmm. i did have painting classes but my concentration was photography okay. <laughs> okay and i stopped doing photography and went into quilt making and a friend of mine um decided to do a painting challenge to do 20 paintings in the year 2020 wow. um as quarantined and I was like oh I haven't picked up a paintbrush in a while let's see what oh my god (laughs) this is something this is something this is just great work great work does anybody have any quick questions for Unicia or comment well if you do this well and you're painting you don't normally do it I'd like to see your art quilts yeah be awesome yeah yeah. And and I believe Winifred Wallace is still on the call. Winifred, are you still here? Yes, I am. Yes, Winifred is also, she works in textile art, Unicia. So you two might have some talk. Hi, Winifred. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so I'd love to meet you and see your art quotes. Yes, yes. I'm going to make a note to send each of, of you each other's contact information. Thank you. I'd like that. Have a year. Okay. All right. Any any other questions to you, Nisia? Okay. Okay now guys, we gotta like zip through now. So whoever's not on the call, we're just gonna look at their art and you know and say a few words if anything, okay? Because I really want us to get through everything. Okay. Is Pamela here? Okay. You talking about Pamela McKenzie? No, Meacher. Pamela Meacher. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm on my. I'm on. I'm, I'm on a um, Pamela Crittenden uh, because I couldn't uh, log in for some reason. Oh no. I'm McKenzie. So I I don't know where I'm gonna wind up in your slideshow, but I'm here. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Okay. So, so your piece, did, can you tell me, were you in the animals or in the marine life and water? Well, your categories somehow make me confused, but I'm abstract somewhere. Okay. So if you're, if you're abstract, then you probably are not in this particular gallery talk, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. Because with the abstracts are, I believe, the the third gallery talk, which is on Sunday. Oh, okay. So I'm early. Yeah, you're early, but that's okay. <laughs> At least you you have a chance to practice getting on, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's amazing work that that I'm I'm seeing, and I always right. get energized by looking at other folks' work. Yeah. Especially when it comes to animals. I'm a yes. nat. I mean. Um, uh, National Geographic uh, fanatic. So wow, uh, all right. Not the best best gallery for the day, even if I'm not at the right one right now. Cool. 
is Smriti Gargava here? I believe this piece was about all the plastic refuse that's littering up the waterways and the oceans and the poor turtle is trying mm -hmm. to navigate yeah. through it, you know? Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Ann, is Ann Tin here? Okay. Again, like I said, we, we need to we keep have you in the wrong set. Yeah. How about George McNair? This is beautiful. This is a family of whales. Four whales ascend. Beautiful work. That's pretty. Yeah. Like that. This one is Ellen Burns Sandbeck. Is Ellen here? Sea dragon. <laughs> Beautiful. The Chinese ear of the dragon is represented by the weedy seed dragon. Wow, eight and a half by 11 inches. Wow. Okay. And this is me. Ah, okay, Maria. Hi, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> Lost at sea, collage on canvas, 10 yeah. by 10. The marine ecosystem is an example of how delicate the cycle of natural life is. All right, Maria, take it away. Tell us a little bit about this piece and a little bit about your art background. Yeah, first, well, I'm from Venezuela. Ah. I'm living in the United States. And I'm connected with nature and with art since I'm very young. Mm -hmm. uh, I will try to explain myself in English. I'm not very fluent. <laughs> but <laughs> you do it well. well. Yeah. I was a scuba diver when I was young and mm -hmm. I fell in love with the sea and the quietness when you are in the sea and when you are trying to do not breathe with all the equipment you have, you're just listening to the fish eating from the coral mm -hmm. and just uh, how the water moves. And this is one of these images you can see when you are scuba diving with all, when all the fishes are in, in a mass, mm -hmm. uh, diving around, mm -hmm. looking for food. Mm -hmm. So in my artwork, most of my artwork had to be with nature. Ah. I, I do all of my artwork. Um, I love nature and I, I like to express the beauty of this. And it's kind of telling the people how important and how beautiful is this, are these beings, natural beings, mm -hmm. and how we are connected to them. Mm -hmm. And in this particular piece, uh, I am worried too with the garbage we create. So this particular piece and the pieces I've been doing these years are made with recycled materials. Oh. The only thing I bought there is uh, the canvas. Mm -hmm. All the silver background is made with uh, tea envelopes. Okay. That, yeah, they are silver. And all the fish are from all calendars. I've been collected with beautiful images of animals. So I just put them around, uh, like trying to create a movement of life in this. Wow, that's extraordinary. Wow. So these, these, so the collage is from the paper, at least, is from your magazines that you've collected through the years. Wow. Calendars. A calendar, sorry, calendars. Yeah, okay. many calendars, yeah. Wow, my goodness, my goodness. And what is in the center? What, I can't quite make it out. Well, it's like a whole, like a, everything can go into it, like, you know, the black hole in the space? Yes, yes. But in it's in the sea. Okay, so, so it's, it's, it's not so it's not a fish with its mouth open. No, it was okay. an eye actually. <laughs> it, this one was an eye from a big fish, a big image I have. Okay. And I just got the circles of this, mm. and I left the hole that is silver like the background, so the mm -hmm. light continues and it can go into the hole too. Ah, okay. Very, 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 very interesting. Very interesting. It's it's something to look at and to 
look at for a long time. Very beautiful. Okay, guys, do you have any questions or comments about this piece for Maria? Yes, I have. Hi, Maria. Uh, Hi. First of all, uh, well done. Uh, I love it. Um, I just have a question. How did you get these together? I mean, um, since you're doing the collage, um, so um, like, I'm, I'm just curious to know how did you manage to bring this into harmony? Um, as if it is a one picture, like if you haven't told us about the process, I wouldn't think this is um, this is how you did it. You know what I mean? Well, first I, I talk about the, the background and I use these uh, uh, tea bags that there are silver inside and I thought maybe this uh, can create the sea. And all the pieces around the fish, these are little uh, pieces. I just had a lot of work going around with this and working with the color. So I, I, I extract from the calendars a group of fish with the same color and I start working with the uh, like uh, li lines, circles with color and fish and I work in a, in a circle. But it, it was a lot of work because these are a lot of small pieces. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I can tell a lot of details. Mm -hmm. Good job. Very and, nice. and, and it's very, very honorable that you use the recycled, yes. recycled piece. Yeah. yeah, this yeah. year yeah. I made a series of uh, collection canvas, and all of them are from uh, recyclable materials. These are uh, from images from calendars or yeah. from magazines. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very good. All right. Well, thank you very, very much, Maria. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for the opportunity. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. My pleasure. My pleasure. Wow, little turtle. <laughs> Laurel. Laurel. Is Laurel here? Okay, Stormy, I know Stormy's here. Stormy is our second winner. She's our second place winner. Stormy, are you still here? I am, hi. Hi, hi. Let me just, let me just make sure I have your face. Okay, good, gotcha. All right, so please tell us about these wonderful works. Now, I'm, I'm, while you're talking, I'm going to sort of, you know, pan over because you have three works. So I want to show everyone. I thought you had three. Where's the third one? Two and just two. Oh, you have two. Okay, sorry. So uh, thank you, first of all, uh, for uh, I feel really honored to be in this exhibit and I appreciate it being available for us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, these are ceramic sculptures. Um, it, it says mixed media because uh, the majority of them are ceramic, but some of it is uh, the, the bottom the, where the water is, is actually a piece of wood that I painted oh. with acrylics and then put a lacquer over the top. And then uh, the image, the pieces there, the trash that's in it is actually, some of them are made with a 3D pen mm -hmm. and then some found objects. Um, but the majority of it is ceramic sculpture. I am a ceramic sculptor. I've been sculpting for about 40 years, wow. um, starting out as a studio potter and then just finally morphing into more and more um, animals. And I'm very, very passionate about uh, endangered species. I've been doing endangered species exhibits uh, for the, since 2015, starting with the elephants. We had talked about the elephants earlier. Yes. And so I started with the elephant exhibit and then uh, moved on to Asian animals. And then this, these two pieces were actually uh, pieces that were in exhibit at the first of the year for uh, endangered species of North America. Oh. So uh, the Ridley uh, turtle is, is an endangered sea turtle, which all of the sea turtles are actually endangered. 
And one of the biggest reasons for them being in danger is trash in the ocean. So that's why they're all in the trash. And I'm, I'm playing on this because they, the turtles that belong in the ocean are escaping into the boat. They're getting out of the ocean where they belong to get into the boat for safety. And they're looking forward to a future, hopefully, that we clean up these oceans. And <laughs> yeah, so that was the whole point of the piece. It was yeah, like yeah. getting out of the water where they belong into the boat to move forward into a future, hopefully, that we, mm -hmm. um, where they will be safe and can live mm -hmm. back in the ocean again. Mm -hmm. um, the other piece is actually a success story. And one of the few success stories I had in this particular exhibit, um, because this is a humpback well, and it says he's also in a boat. So what I want to give people the feeling of these animals in a precarious situation. So I did a lot of animals in boats, um, the boats that were sinking, or like this one, it's called without a paddle. Um, um here too he belongs in the ocean but he's out of the ocean in a boat uh without a paddle kind of lost at sea because of the situation they're in and so these a lot of these pieces were kind of tongue and tongue in cheek um pieces uh mm -hmm. i want the, the viewer to feel that they are that they're uncomfortable the animals are uncomfortable they're either sinking in a boat or don't belong there without um, being graphic about what's happening to these animals. But um, the humpback whale is actually a success story because um, in the, when, when about 1990s, we started a movement with Greenpeace to save the humpback whales and it worked. Uh, wow. People, they, they became, they were listed on the endangered species. Uh, they were banned for hunting. And they made a huge comeback and their numbers are increasing all the time. So the humpback well is a story saying we can do it. Yes. We can save these animals if we want to do it. Mm -hmm. My six year old asked me how strong my immune system was. I'm sorry. Anyway, uh, so, uh, so that was one of the few pieces in there then in the exhibit that I was doing for North American, um, endangered species that is an ex success story. And I think that, that it speaks loudly for what we are capable of doing in, mm -hmm. in helping these creatures to survive. Mm -hmm. And so I'm so passionate about this. That's mainly my focus for the last five years is mm -hmm. doing endangered species. Uh, and we donate 10% of all of our sales to United, uh, the Wildlife Federation okay. Wildlife Fund mm -hmm. uh, because it's, really important and right. I, I think as artists we can be very impactful right for these, right these, right it, so it's a great so, exhibit because I think art can make a difference yeah thank you thank you thank you thank you for being on board with us for this exhibit and for your beautiful artwork and this is again this is just lovely I mean the ceramics so this this is besides the water being lacquered wood, the rest of it is then clay? Yes. Okay, okay. Very good. It's clay any... These are actually uh, acrylic finish on the clay. Okay, okay, got you. Is there, is there anyone who has a question for Stormy? Or any comment? I just want to say I, I really like it. And... Uh... The barnacles are interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I love texture. I, as a matter of fact, the elephants that I did when I did that, uh, when I saw the backside of the elephants, it was my favorite part because the backside of elephants are so textury. It's mm -hmm. just fun to do as a sculptor. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful. Anyone else has any comments for Stormy? I'll go back to this one here. The artwork speaks for themselves. The concepts yeah. are so clear. I mean, yeah. amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The rendering is so excellent. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And I did this Viking boat. I, I just had so much fun doing that Viking boat. <laughs> 
Right. It's great. They have the, the turtle has something to hold on to in the front. <laughs> Is this a mirror mirror and a can and what else? Right, so there is a, a, a net in there, and then um, one of the big dangers for uh, turtles is the little uh, things that hold the sodas together, like the little plastic things. So on the left side there, the little white plastic can holder that you get a six pack of. You should always cut those up. Mm -hmm. Right, so that's really dangerous for them, and it's just got a dead fish skeleton and just junk, you know, wow. um, there's a ball, there's a plastic bag in there. Yeah. yeah. And it looks like a brush or a mirror. Yeah. A mirror. There's a comb in there too. And, um, a box of cereal, a mm. plastic bottle, just all the stuff that ends up floating around the ocean. Yeah. All right. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Stormy, for the work that you do and that you're so committed to helping the endangered, you know, that's, and you're right, you know, as artists, we can do a lot. So I'm hoping that as a group, you know, we can continue to make an impact. Yes, it's a great tip that we have this platform. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. You're welcome. Now, Tharanga, I know, I believe you're on the call, right? You're still here? I am here. Good. <laughs> so, please Hi. tell us, <laughs> great, tell us a little bit about yourself and tell us about your beautiful ink drawing here, Seahorse. Um, yeah, so... I have been showing my work since around 2016 mm -hmm. and never prior to that, but my whole life I've been drawing. Um, I was first a student of biology mm -hmm. and then I got a scholarship for music because of which I ended up in the United States. Oh, okay. So I'm, orig I'm originally from Sri Lanka, which is oh. all ocean. Ocean, ocean. So I'm very connected to the ocean and uh, uh, the animals. And so, um, so I always thought, okay, I'm going to go to school for visual arts. And then all, this whole thing happens. And then uh, I think I've been drawing for longer than I've been studying music or biology. But, uh -huh. but like the word, the, you know, my educational background didn't go exactly in the visual arts line. Mm -hmm. So I constantly was learning on my own and you know reading up look, going to exhibitions I mean learning all kinds of ways of doing artwork on my own so I am self-taught mm -hmm. uh, uh -huh. but professionally I, I, so I'm, I uh I've been an opera for uh, ever since I graduated school so um so the interesting thing is that I always felt that um lots of um, topics interest me uh, because of my background. And very often when you're a musician, words don't speak as loud as music does. Mm -hmm. And similarly, I constantly draw things like on my scores and everything that's like drawings all the time. And usually people end up talking about what's on your score or like, you know, what, what is this? And then the conversations are much, much clearer and I can, I have the power almost to speak about things I want to talk about other than just music. Mm. Uh, so these drawings all came about from that kind of thing where I almost make them as conversation pieces. Okay. They, people just wonder what these things are. And then I was like, oh, do you know about the seahorse? <laughs> and then mm. I would talk about the horse, you know. Uh. Like, uh, uh, so in this, this particular one, uh, I mean, the seahorse, uh, you know, it's, it's lived on earth for about 13 million years. And wow. now they're left about three decades left in, if things go the way they do. So it just feels so unfair, you know. Yeah. Because uh, they're good survivors. They've lived, they've done well evol evolutionary. And, they, and, and then they're not just dying because of things that are happening to the environment, but because people harvest them 
for medicinal purposes and things like that. Wow. Um, so it's like there's all kinds of things happening to these creatures. So like uh, this is one of the many topics that I'm and uh, and amongst like other things like uh, humanitarian issues and uh, mm-hmm. Asian issues. I I draw about those things. Um, yeah. And uh, so they just become like triggers for conversation. So, uh, I, I mean, and also like we all, usually when animals are large, I feel like the conversations are also large around them. Mm-hmm. And when they're small, it's easy to overlook. So I try to draw the small things mm-hmm. because uh, you'd never have like a nice talk about the seahorse or <laughs> <laughs> like it's not something people do. So unless someone has like a trigger. So in this case, like, uh, just like you mentioned earlier, like the, the elephants have this bond with family and like yeah. family. the seahorse does too. Ah. Uh, the female makes all the eggs, but the male keeps it safe in a pouch for about like 45 days before they hatch and the babies come out. So they mm-hmm. have this real bond, like the, the family unit bond. So, I mean, those things are fascinating. And if we can have compassion to these small things, I don't think it'll be too difficult for us to have compassion for each other, which seems to be lacking also, you know. So, yes. conversations <laughs> yes. uh, fascinate me. And, uh, and so when I sing, I, I, would, I would perform something. And maybe if I do a recital, I would in, include... Uh, <coughs> A, a song that resonates with either a sea creature or something else that resonates to me at that given time. And sometimes I exhibit while I perform and uh, I try to mix and match. And so it's, it's been a fun journey. So. Wow, very good. So, so how long have you been, been in the States? Uh, I, I moved as a freshman in college. So this is probably my 18th year in the okay. US. Okay. And then uh, I went to, uh, I did my master's also in opera and voice. And that's why I moved to New York. I went to the Juilliard school. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then I worked at New York City Opera. And, you know, like, so, and then I, I got a, a TED fellowship. So I traveled to talk. Uh, and ah. then I used my art and music to convey the different topics that I want to speak about. So it's, it's been uh, better than words. For me. <laughs> I bet it's wonderful. Well, welcome, welcome. That is an awesome story, Taranga. I'm so happy that you're a part of this. And so so this is the second seahorse piece of artwork. (laughs) Right? Very beautiful, very beautiful. And I've, I've traveled to Sri Lanka. I spent one month there in the early eighties. I love it. When I got off the plane, I felt like it was the garden of Eden. It was so beautiful flowers and it was just beautiful. I I was born and raised there. So yeah. 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 So does anybody have any questions for Taranga or, or comments about her piece or her background or any questions at all? Feels like everybody's getting tired. <laughs> okay. Thank you again, Taranga. Thank you. Beautiful, Thank you. Thank beautiful you. work. Very detailed. Very beautiful. For being self-taught, you you still are yourself, yourself, and you are an artist and a very detail-oriented and patient. You have to be patient to do these ink drawings. I know that much. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. Do we have, let's see, whose is this here? Dr. Helen Ding, is she here? Okay. Okay, so we're finished because we started with the mermaid okay so we are going to exit out of that one let's see yeah this is the this is the part two animals and this is the last so we're gonna try to 
is there any artist that's here that hasn't spoken about their piece yet that's in the, the animal that's in this this in this section yes uh, i have i'm in this section uh eleanor guerrero okay great so what um, i'm gonna is the um mm -hmm. go ahead the green one no no um, is the other way no, that way. That's correct. It's the landscape, the green one. No, the other way. <laughs> okay, I'm, yes, I'm looking at going. this one. Yes, okay. No, it, it's um, there, that one, yes. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, so Eleanor, take her away. Tell us a little bit about your piece here and a little bit about yourself. on mute are, are you muted Eleanor can you hear me now yeah now we can hear you I should have back on mute uh -oh. okay can you hear me now yes so don't okay. touch anything <laughs> I won't touch anything. okay <laughs> uh, this is Grand Teton National Park and I live in Montana which is just around the corner through Yellowstone uh, to uh, lower Montana. Um, about I live about 60 miles from the Yellowstone National Park border. And we have grizzlies. We have grizzlies all around. And it's quite amazing because they started expanding out of the park uh, just about the last 10 years. And now they're in my neighborhood, which is incredible. And I'm originally from New Jersey. I grew up in uh, Bruce area by the Jersey Shore. I worked in New York and I actually uh, took art courses at Penn State and um, became a lawyer and I did environmental law. Mm -hmm. And part of the reason I'm out here is because I couldn't clean up New Jersey. <laughs> I tried, <laughs> but um, I came out here because I was looking for clean air, clean water, uh, beautiful, landscapes that were not threatened. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, the same fights are out here, the same fights are out here. And this grizzly, I had actually stood at this spot and I was so taken with it. It was so lush and beautiful. And yet you can feel the large mammals of the West. You can feel them. Mm -hmm. And I made the, the landscape first. And then for about a year, I was trying to imagine what was here where I was standing. And then it was just this last year, I realized it was a grizzly. Ah. And part of what I did about him is put him in, a, in an alert state, but sort of a confident state because they're not hunted today, mm. but there is a constant pressure to hunt them and use them as trophy wow. animals. And they're a predator. So they're at the height of the um, the food chain and uh, that could change any day now in Montana and Wyoming. Montana's seriously considering it and they're pushing very hard for the feds to deregulate them and we just had an advisory panel made of experts from Wyoming and Montana and federal experts and they couldn't come to a conclusion about whether to recommend continuing the protections so it could change at any time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I seem to have some connection to them because the few times I ventured out into the really rough wilderness in the winter, I run into a grizzly print. Wow. They're, they're not that common. So there seems to be a real connection. And um, I just feel very passionate about the large mammals that are out here that are now considered game. And this one may be considered game not too, not too soon. And uh, we just have to keep vigilant. This morning, I sent uh, an email to all the major environmental groups. And I said, how about starting something like hashtag boycott Arctic lease corporations? Mm. And just start scaring the corporations about buying up the leases in the Arctic. Because that's one of our last 
last remaining vast wildernesses and so crucial to the, the calving of the caribou. It's a major area. Mm -hmm. And I thought if they could spread that hashtag Arctic Lease Corporations, boycott, boycott Arctic Lease Corporations, because these corporations are just about to bid on leases. And once they bid on the leases in the Arctic wilderness, it may be over. But if they get scared because of public outcry, they may not. They know it's a very hot subject. Yeah. And the administration now is moving very quickly to try to do it by the first week of January or so. Yeah. So over the next month, if we could spread that, hashtag boycott Arctic lease corporations, maybe we could get them to back off. Mm -hmm. Because I know eventually the public outcry will can you, well, but it takes can you, time can you put Can you put that in the chat, the hashtag? Say it one more time. Hashtag Arctic. Hashtag artists. Artist, say it again. Just say it, and I, and I can Arctic put it lease. in. Hashtag Arctic Lease Corporations. So the corporations are about to, they're okay. about to bid, bid on the okay. leases in the Arctic. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we could stop them from bidding and, and purchasing these leases over the mm -hmm. next month, if people have enough outcry, maybe we could save what they call the Serengeti of the United States, the last big yeah. area. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's my spiel, but uh, I'm still passionate <laughs> about it. Yeah. Well, thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Thank you for being passionate. I mean, that's why we're here together, not just to show our artwork, but also to the, to talk about the reasons why we're so passionate about the artwork and what it means to us to be a global citizen, not just in our little town, but in this on this planet, because that's what we've got, you know. So thank you, and and I you believe can't run away. yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Even though some of the ones who have a few bucks, they can take the 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 rocket, you know, out of space, but the. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's well, okay. you know, I don't think. I don't think they're ever going to find a planet as beautiful as this. Right, right. You know, despite all the horrors going on now, it is such a beautiful planet. Mm. You think yeah. about how it provides for us. Yeah. You know, it's just a miracle. Yeah. Well, this piece is very, it's very meditative. When I look at it, it looks very, very peaceful. Even though the grizzly is on alert, I get the feeling that it, it is very peaceful and quiet even though the brook is streaming by you know so the the feeling that you've captured of the environment there is very 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 good even the the in the background the mountains with snow caps on them you know very beautiful thank you i've always tried to put the viewer where, where i am because the sights that I'm seeing out in the West are just mind blowing coming from the yeah. East Coast. Yeah, yeah. And they're just so, so rich. They're so right. rich. I, that's my, my goal is to try to let you feel it. Yeah. Well, I feel it. I feel it. <laughs> Does anybody have any quick comments about? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Eleanor. Thank you. So we're going to. Thank you. Thank you. Who is this little cutie pie grizzly? Joe off duty. Is Joe here? No, she's not. Monica. Is Monica here? Monica is here. Okay. This gallery has less artwork. So we should be finishing up shortly. Okay, so this one is the last of the breed, the buffalo. It looks a little angry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could tell its eye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Wow. Yeah, and this is an oil, oil piece, 30 by 48. Very, very nice size. It says here, nearly hunted to extinction, the importance of the buffalo cannot be undersold. And their resilience inspired me to paint them. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. Looks like we're on to the gorillas now. This is the gorilla. Monica isn't here, so we're gonna keep going. And this is the orangutan, the digital piece. Very nice. Is Rebecca here? No. This piece is Alex Porodowski, is Alex here? Let's see what he's got close up. Okay. Talking about close up, I think of Chuck Close in his squares. Okay, he's not here. Beautiful piece though, very beautiful piece. And this is handmade paper cubes and acrylic, 37 by 34. Very nice. It says, if this gaze looks similarly human, it may be because we are 98% of our DNA with gorilla, with the gorilla. All right. Very nice. And this one here, we've got Karen Julian. Is Karen on the line? No. Okay. I think we're almost done. Wanani Hammersley on beautiful. I love her work. <laughs> Deep Forest. Miss Hammersley is also, I believe, from from Canada. It reminds me a little bit of uh, Gauguin. Yes, yes. This one she did also, the snow leopard. Beautiful work. And the camel. Is Deborah here? No. Okay. And this piece coming up is actually a sculptor. Paper mache on pedal on metal wire. Sorry, Shani Zahav. She's she's in Vancouver. She lives in Vancouver. She has a couple of pieces in the show. The horse. And this one is the, I believe, tiger. She's making a tiger. Very beautiful. And and here are the real horses. This one is done, this is a photograph. This probably was um, manipulated with maybe uh, Photoshop. Beautiful. Larissa, is Larissa here? No. Javon Rhino, Rebecca, is Rebecca here? Beautiful, Rhino. Javon are critically endangered with only around 60 individual Javon Rhinos left in the world. Wow, just a few of them left. And this one belongs to Abhisek. Is he or she here? Also a rhino. Kamal. This is watercolor. 
And I think we started, did, did we start here? I believe we did, right, Kinsey? Yes. Yeah, we started here. So in this one, we, Rebecca, we saw that one. Okay, so I think we're done, guys. Why is it that I don't remember these two? Angie, I don't remember seeing this one. Did we see this one? This one is Endangered Love. It's an acrylic on canvas. I don't think Angie is here, but this is a beautiful piece. Very beautiful. Very vibrant. And Jan Murphy, is she here? Adorable. Yeah, this one is. <laughs> so Look at the eyes. Look at the eyes, the little eyes. Beautiful. Andrew was one of the first bears to be rescued from a bear bile farm. Bear bile farm by the organization Animals Asia. He spent many years in a small cramped cage, horrifically abused in order to harvest his bile. Oh dear. While mm -hmm. Andrew's life was short, he knew love before he passed away in the safety of the animals Asia sanctuary in China. My goodness, what they do to animals. Gee whiz. Gee whiz. Okay, and yes, we did see this one. Yes. Um, somebody just came in but we just am finishing up. So what I'm gonna do is stop this screen share. Because I'm ready. Right? And wrap it up, you guys. You've been such a wonderful, <laughs> you hung in there all of this time. Let's see, I've got my analog watch here. It says 10 minutes after nine. So we hung out for a good two hours. So you, you just, I love it. Thank you for hanging out and thank you for being here, for sharing your art and your comments. Now, before I sign off, does anyone have anything they want to say about anything in the art world, what's going on with you? This is time to just say stuff. <laughs> well, what if, did, you didn't, were you in, you're in another show then, you're not in this, you weren't in this one. Uh, no, but we've been in shows before with Art Impact Wanda. No, I know, but I I thought I when you were on the screen, I, I guess I just assumed you had an animal in one of one of the so <laughs> you must be in another gallery then. Oh, okay, yeah. that's all. No, I, I get all of I get all of Carolyn's <laughs> emails, so I try to watch oh, everything okay. that she she has. Okay, <laughs> okay. Well, I was just wondering where yours was. Okay, yeah, and I thank, like thank you though. Yeah. Yeah, and I'd like also to announce, Winifred, thank you for accepting the offer to become our Art Impact's new secretary. So say thank hello you. to our new secretary, Winifred Wallace. So she's so Hi, if everyone. you get yes, if you get any emails from her, at least you know who she is. A beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> we, her pieces usually always sell in the shows that we do in in D.C. in anywhere something sells. So. And I have a secret to tell you guys too. I'm coming out with a, um, an ebook about how to sell your art. This is gonna be our next campaign with Art Impact. Getting her done, selling your artwork, okay? So we're gonna be focusing on sales, okay? So because I think we need money to do what we need to do to yes. keep not just to survive, but to prosper. And so, because we have so many things to do, we're also gonna be writing more grants and also doing some crowdfunding. So, so stick with us, okay? There's gonna be tons of opportunities and hopefully tons of contributions coming in from different places. And we're also setting up a, an office in the UK. We have a gentleman, an artist as well, who is as, excited and enthusiastic about us as artists as a group as I am and you know I'm excited right and so he's going to be opening up the UK so I'm hoping that we can start having shows over there as well 
That's always my mission, so that we can actually have artwork all over the world, right? Maybe, maybe at least digitally, because it's a little less expensive and a little less headache to ship artwork, but at least to get some networking done in the different countries. So if any of you that's on the call now have any ideas about having an office in your country, right? Call me. <laughs> okay, because we're, we're 2021 is going to be exquisite. All right. So tell me anybody else. I've said my little piece. Who else wants to say anything? Anything at all? You've got. I want, to, I want to say thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because it's very uh, emotional. I am very sad and very joy at the same time. Because why, are you, why are you sad? Because animals. Oh, yeah. Well, for animals. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Yes, 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 yes. Well, I'm, I'm hoping that, I'm hoping with our energy that we can make some kind of a difference, you know, some kind of a difference. So what I want to do is to promote our artwork to the different areas that will listen. So if you have ideas, please throw them my way, okay? And I took down, I took down the hashtag Arctic Lease Corporations, like you, like you mentioned, Eleanor. Arctic Lease Corporations. Um, all right. So anybody has any hellos, goodbyes, or anything? And Eunicia, thank you for coming. I know you came in a little late, but you came in at a good time because we had just gone past your piece, you know. So thank you. Thank you, Eunicia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank, thank you. you. So we're going to sign off. And so our next our next um, artist talk is going to be tomorrow, and it's not as is not as big. I, I figured I'd do the biggest one on an evening because people would have less worries about having to wake up the next morning to go or to do whatever you know they usually do. So this I think was very good. So again, thank you everyone. Thank you for sharing your evening with me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. Okay. Bye bye. bye. Night. Good night. Good night. Bye.